Oh, Shalom, Rastafari, and a very, and a very uh, good Shalom. Seeing that this is the King's, seeing this is the King's Sabbath. Um, this is the King's Sabbath. This is also coronation, um, the anniversary, and we say uh, in Kwan, uh, in Kwan le Nagusa Negest Zod Baal. Bedechna yaderesawo aderesacho. Bedechna aderesacho. In other words, congratulations. He has brought you safely, bedechna, in salvation in Yeshua, to the feast of the King of Kings coronation 2012 and the 82nd coronation of. Our Godfather of Abba, Caduce, 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 of His Imperial Majesty, of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Haile Selassie I, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia. And I am Wendem, Brother Yadon, Arasi Adinos Teferinen, reporting for the LOJ Society, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Society of His Imperial Majesty in the Americas, the Caribbean, and throughout the world. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Once again, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, a sabbatical peace on this Friday afternoon going into Friday evening, which is the beginning of the, the Holy Shabbat, the Holy Senbet. And in our Torah portion readings and feedings, this is also very significant. So the brothers and the sisters and the disciples, no doubt you have a, a copy of this, or you can get this from our resource center at lojsociety.org, the Sabbath house readings and feedings. And we're at the third, actually the third, um, reading and feeding, and, and here it goes right here. Let's zoom in on this right here, the third reading and feeding that is uh, known as, um, in the Haile Selassie, the first Bible, as Teleite, Teleite Wit'a, Teleite Wit'a. Let's, here we go right there, Teleite Wit'a. And in the Hebrew, the Masoretic traditional Hebrew as lek leka, lek leka. Now, if we, if we would, um, you can actually, you know, download this, um, the Torah portion, the 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 Torah portion, the five volumes from lionofjudahsociety.org. So go there, or you can order a hard copy of it so that you can follow along. Ideally, getting a hard copy would be best, but for right now, so that ones can stay up to, you know, stay abreast and, and stay up to date, because keeping the Sabbath holy, set apart, to remember the Sabbath, so there's a spiritual ascent in that, in the remembrance of, of the Sabbath. So this portion here. Now, last um, Shabbat, the Senvet, it was Yenoch or Noch, Noah, Noach, right? The second um, Torah portion, reading and feeding, since the joy of the Torah. And since we complete it, we're in a new year. As Ethiopian Hebrews, we're in a new year. So let me scroll right here and get the hard copy of the Bereshit. And you can download it once again from lionofjudahsociety.org, spelled out fully. So we have the lojsociety.org with the live um, streaming or with the streaming, the audios and the videos there, as well as Lion of Judah Society.org. All right? So um, Lek Leka is very interesting because uh, Teleite, Teleite means to separate, separate, be separate, be separate. Wit'a, Wit'a means to come out. And we find this in Genesis 
the Torah portion is Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to Genesis chapter 17, verse 27. Yet in this particular year, now the rhema, that's, that's the constant word. We have the constant word or the logos, and we have the rhema, the constant word, the scripture, and then we have the revealed word, the inspired, when we find that the, the scripture comes to life or there's a revelation concerning that scripture portion in your life or in life, in reality, because we are saved by grace. Yet the law, the Torah, came through Moses, Musa, the head of the fraternal order of the Beta Israel, and, and grace and truth. But grace and truth, grace and truth and reality. So in the reality, when we speak about the scriptures of the Bible, and we speak about the throne of David, and we speak about what the Bible says, that, that the, David's throne, that David will never lack a man to sit upon the throne, upon his throne, upon the throne of great King David. And now this man, as, 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 as Psalm um, 87 says, and this man was born there. A lot of them say, oh, we're wrong about that. We're, it's not talking about, well, who is it speaking of? Who is the king of kings? They will say it is our big brother, it is our Lord, Adonai, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But remember, Yeshua said that he comes to testify of his father, his father, our father, his God, our God. So behold, prophecy fulfilled. Right, 1930, and right here, Ethiopia, stretch forth her hands, and let us uh, zoom in on this right here, Ethiopia, stretch forth her hands to God, right, and this is an interesting picture um, right here as well, right, Ethiopia, stretch forth her hands to God, the King of Kings, behold him. All right. Now, what's very interesting, if you really were to study scripture and study prophecy in its true scriptural and prophetic content, you'll recognize that Babylon in the world is missing half of the story. Right. That's why a lot of their prophecies and a lot of what they say in their predilections of predictions don't make the eschatologies all wrong because they've been deceived by the deceiver and the racism that prevents them from receiving it because it is black, right? And because they make God a devil and the devil a God. You see what I'm saying? Because they make the black man, right? They demonize the black man. They deny our kinsman redeemer. They deny the king of kings of Ethiopia, they deny Edomawi Haile Selassie. But we know that prophecy is fulfilled, has been fulfilled, and yet it is still fulfilling, right? Yet it is still fulfilling. You know, some things are being fulfilled right now, even as I and I speak, because this is the eve, right, of the Shabbat, and it's also the eve, right, of 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 a of a new of a new age, the end of an age. But yet there's a dispensation. Now, what's very interesting is the eighty second, right? The eighty second. Look at that eighty second. They say that Hala Selassie was eighty one or eighty two years of age when they allege that he died or that something happened or the, the conspiracy or barbed wire act or whatever. But we have evidence both of faith and in reality that, behold, he is the one who was dead, but behold, he lived and is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. But if we look at the date for a moment. We were dealing with 120 years, right, 120 years in this particular year. 2012, where there's so much things to say concerning this from so many different cultures and perspectives, but what does our own root and truth say concerning this? This is what we have to study to show ourselves approved. If we look at the Gedla Adam, 
the Gedla Adam or the contendings of, of Adam um, and Eve against Satan. You'll find that in the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden, a, a, a translation there within that particular document. If you look at the particular day that, that Yared, right, or Jared, right, um, died, right? It's interesting because that particular day, Toxis, I think it's Toxis 12, or the 12th of the Ethiopic month of Toxis. And interestingly enough, in the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden, and we touched on this in other um, documentaries concerning 2012 and, and the Ethiopic um, connection to 2012, that was a Friday. It basically says in the text, and we've highlighted this and noted this in other vids, so we're not going to go over there again, but we'll put this reference out, and you can go and study it and find it there for yourself. But this same day and date, interestingly enough, is the same as December 21st that we've been hearing so much about from the Mayans, right, from the Mayan um, prophecy and, and through the Mayan, the research into the, into the Mayan. And what's interesting is that a lot of this was not known really before, especially by the European. The European has been learning a lot, and he wonders how could these so-called heathen and pagan people, how could they know this? Because he himself is under a curse and a deception, right? Because the European, the Anglo-European, the, the, the Gentiles are under a end time deception. That's why the end of the world corresponds with the end of the Gentile or the, the Greco Greco Roman um, world dominion that we know as the Anglo European world dominion, as well as as well as biblically, prophetically speaking, the end of the church age. So so I, in a Wendem Yad, and I'm here to tell you that we are entering into the King Sabbath. And it was the King Sabbath. Now, what's very interesting is that we are entering into a, a seven to eight year dispensation. When we look at the calendars, and this is why we posted the video previously concerning um, what time is it, really, right? Because a lot of people talk about the signs of the time. But even if you're looking at the signs of the time and you don't know how to tell time, I mean, how would that help you? So you're looking at, it's like somebody looking at a clock, right, and seeing the shorthand, the longhand, the numbers, the positioning, but they don't know numbers, right, and they don't know how to tell time. So they see the sign, but they do not know how to tell time, right? And, and this is where the majority of um, people, but especially the, the lost sheeple, the, the, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the lost sheep, the Beta Israel, the so-called enslaved um, African, the descendants of the enslaved Africans in the Americas and the Caribbean and South and Central America are right now. So, so we, Inya, we as Rastafari, we have a a, 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 a crushing, when I say, a, yes, it's crushing. It's a crushing responsibility to crush, right, to crush the head of the serpent, of, of the beast, of the dragon, of Satan, and to establish the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. And I'm saying that, like it or not, we are in this particular dispensation of time. And what's interesting is that the coronation of his majesty this year, right, 2012, occurs on Friday. Now, Friday is the Shabbat Eve. We can say it's the beginning of the Shabbat. And this is 2012. I mean, a year and a time that whether you believe the Mayans or these ones or those or not, we're already seeing many signs of it. Hurricane Sandy it was is 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 very now people say well that's a storm that's been engineered by the globalists and the new world order and the kings of the earth no doubt with uh satanic interface and and so forth and so on no, and this is why we've touched on that and the holy spirit's been showing us more in that right there but there's an old saying it's not biblical, but there's an old saying that says it's not, it's not nice, they say, to, to mess with Mother Nature or something like that. In other words, that you should not mess 
with Mother Nature. This is why the Bible says that Babylon's wisdom, right, that Babylon's wisdom has deceived them, right, that Babylon's wisdom has deceived them, that the wisdom of Babylon has deceived them. And when you recognize the word wisdom, scripturally speaking, would be updated or understood in a modern parlance as technology. This is also the reason why we touched on um, the word sound and power, power of the tongue from, from Proverbs. I think it was, uh, I believe it was chapter, chapter what was it, 8, 18? Um, um, Proverbs, I think it was chapter 18, if we are correct, where it says that death and life are in the power, right, the power of the tongue. Now, for this coronation, right, I, I said, said, first of all, since it's the Sabbath, it's both the Sabbath, right, and it's the coronation. So that makes this a, 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 a high holy day. This is not just a holy day, but it's a high holy day. It's a metasebia. It's a, it's a memorial. But people will say, well, okay, it's the, those who haven't studied and show themselves approved. They'll say, so what? So what is the 82nd? Just like they said, so what? It's the 120th of Lich Teferi. <sighs> well, you know, every man got a right to decide his own destiny. It's obvious that, you know, that they despise or they mock the signs of the time or they're seeking to, to, to make one believe something. All we're here to do is to be a witness to the truth. So whether ones want to accept it as true or not, whether ones want to accept the King of Kings as truly the King of Kings on the throne of David or not, you understand, they cannot change the reality. So they are just um, wasting the grace, in other words, the opportunity to repent and to have a change of mind. But there's more to this. First of all, just look at the fact that this year is the 120th, right, as well as if we look at the 82nd year and then the 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 visitation of his majesty, as we see in this particular um, picture right here, the visitation of his imperial majesty. This is his majesty covering his face, right, with that battle helmet, right? And we are the generation as the Shabbat psalm. You know, there are psalms for the, the Shabbat. One of them is um, Psalm 24. So let's um, chant some psalms. But first of all, before we even get to Psalm 24, let us look at something right here. Because some say, well, don't worry about learning all these things. You know, all we do is just, just give eyes, give praises, right? Um, they don't know what Isis is, and they obviously don't know who Jesus is as well, the Christ of his majesty. So, therefore, they're not giving praises with overstanding. But the psalm says this, Psalm 47. Psalm 47, to the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah, of Ore. You remember the sons of remember Korah and the Korah, the rebellion, and what happened, the earth opening up and everything, right? Right now we have the sons of Korah right here. It says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to Ha Elohim with the voice of triumph. Yeah! The voice of triumph for Negusa Negas, for Yahweh, he who be who he be, his divine majesty, most high, El Elyon, is terrible. It's terrible. We would say dreadful. He is a great king over all the earth and over all the rebellious so called kings of the earth or of the world seclorum. He shall subdue the people under us. He shall subdue the people under I and I. Do you hear this, Arastafari? Do you hear this, faithful Ethiopian Hebrews? And the nations under our feet as we recognize that we are the Beta Christian and that Christos, that Moshiach, that Yeshua is our head. And therefore all things are under his feet. So if we are the body of Christ and he is our head, well, it, it makes sense that truly the nations are under our feet, right? He shall choose 
our inheritance for us. Notice that right there. He shall choose. Now, people say, well, the inheritance was old Jerusalem, was the beachfront property. You understand? No, we build in the mountains. You have to understand that, you know, for, for he loveth. You understand? He loveth those mountains and the holy mountain, right? He shall choose our inheritance for us. And verily, David had a son named Solomon, and Solomon had a son named David, and it is that David, David the second, Minulik, Baina Lechem, Eben Hakim, that would renew the kingdom of David in the highlands of Ethiopia. All right? Now, the excellency of Yaakov, whom he loved. He loved Yaakov, and he hated Esau. He hated Esau, right? Selah, Selah, meditation, meditate this. Here's where the dub comes in, right? Ha Elohim, the true and living God, the sustainer, and Gaziabi here is going up with a shout. Yeah! He ascends with a shout. With the with the elita, right? Nagusa Neges, Yahweh, he who be who he be, with the sound of a trumpet, with the sound of a shofar. Sing praises, as Rastafari say, Isis. Sing praises to Elohim, to Ha Elohim. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. To our king, to Nugusachin, to our king, sing praises, Miskana, for Elohim, for Ha'el, the true and living God, is the king of all the earth, of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. This is the key right there. So when we sing praises, my brothers and sisters, and we and we keep this this solemn you know, this this solemn memorial, Metasebia, they tell us it's after what, all, so, uh, all Saints Day, All Souls Day? Interesting, very interesting. But sing praises with understanding. Sing praises with overstanding. Ha Elohim reigneth over the heathen. And it's very clear in the demonstration of Negus and Negest that truly, his majesty reign over the heathen. It's like with Yeshua, with the sun. They could do nothing unless there was an Iscariot, Askarotawi, unless one of his own betrayed him. You over that right there. And therefore, Satan used that pretext. So as they did to the son, so did they do to the father, even our Abba. Even Abba, Kedus, Kedus, Kedus. But God reigneth. Jah reigns over the heathen and the sheathen. Ha Elohim sitteth upon the throne of his holiness, of his kedisinal. Verse 9, the princes of the people are gathered together. So that's I and I. Right? Right? Even the people of the God, the Elohim of Abraham, of Abraham, for the shields of the earth, belong to Ha Elohim. He is greatly exalted. He is greatly lifted up. So this is the first psalm for this um for this Eve right here, which is which is the the, the Eve of the Sabbath, as well as we can say we are going into um the uh, 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 Eve of a dispensation. Right, a lot of people looking at the particular day, no, uh, December twenty first. But that's a Friday too. That's a Friday. And how many times, Rastafari, have you have you um, remember? Do you remember the King of Kings um, coronation, coronation day, Nagusa Nagest uh, Zod Baal being on a Friday? Not 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 too not too often. You know, and those of us who have have ridden and 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 ride and have ridden Naya Bingi and and given praises in in, in the Bingi Isis way. You know, saying not too many times. So there's something significant in the fact that this particular this particular um, 
for 2012, this coronation for 2012, the 82nd, occurs on a Friday. The fact that this particular year, our father manifests the 120, the 120, Lich Teferi, the 120, Alba Caduce, 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 120. So we have these, these interesting biblical and scriptural mathematics, right? And the 82nd also, they say that, that his majesty was 82nd or 82 years of age when they um, alleged that he died or that he was killed or so forth. And brothers and sisters, don't even when they say that, you know, when they say, well, um, Rasta, Rasta Farai, your, your God is dead. You know how you should respond to that? Turn your Bibles to Revelation, right? And Revelation, Revelation um, chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand, his yod, right, his yod, his right hand upon me, saying to me, fear not. I am the first and the last. Kedemawi, Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie first, the last king of kings of Ethiopia to date. Don't we recognize that? Isn't that very obvious, Right. Um, don't take a rocket science, a whole bunch of mathematics or, or secret society information to figure that out. Verse 18 says, I am, and this is the red letter. This is the red letter. So ones will say, well, this is Christ speaking. They will say, this is Yeshua. This is Jesus, Jesus. No doubt the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is one, but if you go to the first part of the book, it says the revelation of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Jesus Christos, which which ha Elohim, or the Father, his Father, our Father, his God, our God gave to him. So this is the revelation of Yeshua HaMoshiach, but who gave it to him? It's Abba, it's the Father that gave it to him. And who did Yeshua testify of? He testified of the Father. And Yeshua is Adonai, he is Lord, he is our black Lord and Savior. So he is Lord. He is Lord of Lords. And therefore his father, our father, no doubt, is king of kings. I am he that liveth and was dead. Was dead, right? And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Now here's what's interesting. Folks will say, well... That's because Yeshua had resurrected, you know, from, 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 from the grave and, and overcame hell and death and, and the grave. No doubt. We as truly faithful Rastafari, we don't have any doubt in that because this is what our father, what Kedemawi Haile Selassie, what he teaches us, both in word and in deed. But if you study Revelation for a moment, because a lot of folks would try to, sometimes they'll try to say some of these things were talking about um, what occurred in Yeshua's time. But see, that's, that's a faulty hermeneutic, because look right here in, in the first part. The things which thou hast seen, right? It says the revelation of Yeshua HaMoshiach, which God gave to him to shew to his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So who is this for? The whole world? No. It is for the servants of Yeshua HaMoshiach and his father. And he sent and signified it by his angel, by his Melach. His Melach. Isn't it interesting that his, his majesty was sent to us, the diaspora? The diaspora, the Beta Israel, the Falashes of the West, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, and his name. Malaku means his angel. By his angel to his servant, Johannes. What does Johannes, what does John mean? John is the grace of Yah, of he who is, who he is. Who be a record of the word of God, the word of Ha Elohim, the word of Egeziab Beher, of the sustainer. And of the testimony, the testimony or the witness of Jesus Christos, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he, Baruch, 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 blessed is he that readeth. 
So even to read this, don't frustrate or, or fret yourself if everything is not completely clear when you first time or second or even third time you read it. But get this. There's a blessing in reading Revelation. Bless is he that readeth. And they that hear, that shema, that shema, the words of this prophecy. So many talk about the Mayan prophecy. Well, that's interesting. We can maybe check it out. But firstly and foremostly, it's the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, when we look at the date of this book of Revelation, remember this was a book that many of the so-called Orthodox or Catholic or the, the Babylonian part of the church Christians that came up in the, in the early centuries, notice what books they didn't want to include. They didn't want to include John's Gospel. They didn't want to include that. They said it was too metaphysical. It was too mystical. It was too Gnostic. What does Gnostic mean? Gnostic means scientia. What does scientia mean? It's our English word for science, scientia. Well, doesn't Christ say ye shall know gnosis, right, the truth, and the truth shall set you free? So we get to see part of the mystery and conspiracy of iniquity because they don't want you to know this truth. So that's why they didn't want the gospel of Johannes of John's grace in the Bible. This is why they did not want the the revelation Rayo le Johannes ye Johannes Rai in the Bible because as Burhana Salase said, as Bob Marley said, revelation reveals what the truth. Right? The truth. Remember Yeshua came forward, right? The law came by Moses. And the Torah portion is very interesting here, too, because we, we just went through um, Psalm 47 to speak about, yes, we have to give eyes, but eyes with overstanding, with comprehension. You understand? Because it says, what did Christ say to the Samaritan woman? Um, ye worship that which you don't know what you worship. But we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, is of Judah, is of Moa on Bessas the Imanageta Yehuda Hebrews tells us that verily our Adonai, our black Lord and Savior, and, and we emphasize that because they sought to pervert and to lie and to blaspheme the humanity of Yeshua, of the Mushiach. You understand? But then, again, that was a part of the word of prophecy. It did say that they would come with another, another Yeshua, a whitewashed Caesar Bogiers. They would come with another gospel, right, a ghost spell, right, and another spirit, a ghost, an unholy ghost, and blaspheme the holy spirit by calling it a ghost, and a ghost and a spirit, if you study, the word is two different things. So your King James Version is not inspired but that which it is reflective of. You have to now go from the reflected light, like of the moon, to say, and to recognize the direction of the reflection where the source is, because the moon does not give its own light. So when we're studying Torah, it's important for us to recognize that as well. This is why the gospel, the good news of the King of Kings is so very important for us and to us. So on this particular coronation right here, this coronation metasebia, my brothers and sisters, we are saying get ready. You understand? I mean, get ready in spirit, get ready in soul, get ready in body. But first, get ready by beholding Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Receiving the Moshiach or the Christos, the Christ of his majesty, the true Christ, our true black Lord and Savior, because that's the only way we really truly know who the Father is. You see, some think that, well, we just um, accept his majesty because he's black. No, that, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not like that. It's because of his majesty's word sound. It's because of his, his example. You understand? It's because of his humanity. It's because of his humility. You understand? It's because of his truth. It's because of his grace 
And he says, it's not him, but it is Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? And, and this is what's so beautiful about the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. And now, before I, before I sit about to, to record this right here for um, the 82nd, I had opened a, a doc right here. This is an interesting doc right here. I don't know if you'll be able to find it, but this doc is called The Restoration of the King of Kings. I thought this was an interesting doc. We, we didn't publish this. This was um, a view through the entrance, entrance passageway, and I think this was um, which particular site this was on right here. But just, just the title right there caught my attention, The Restoration of the King of Kings. Restora Remember, Revelation says that um, God puts it into their hearts to give their kingdoms to the, to the beasts and to the antis and to, to the opposers of truth. You understand? So they think that what they were doing and what they have done even to the king of kings was by their own will. They don't recognize how the Holy Spirit, you understand, moved them according to the will of the Father and according to the testimony of the Son. So this particular page right here reminds me of what the reason for this season that we're in right now. And um, we have some more information out about the King Sabbath. Please check it out, because now that we're looking at the timetable, what time we are really in, this is why it's important to be able to um, tell time but also to recognize the sign. So it, just because you can tell time, you have to be able to recognize the sign too. So both of those. So we're seeing a lot of signs, but what do these signs actually, right? What do these signs actually mean? Um, what's the significance really truly of the pyramid, even right there, right? And um, there's much more to this particular page right here, but... Let's just go through showing you a little bit of it. It would take us a, a little while to really go through it. You know, and we point to the heavens. One to ask us, well, what do the heavenly bodies have to do with it? Some say, oh, they're dealing with astronomy, astrology, or whatnot like that. And they'll try to say we are worshiping the stars. Since when we say we worship any of the stars? You understand? When you look at what time it is on a clock, or, or when you look up at a clock, are you worshiping that clock? You understand? If if you recognize what the time is, right, uh, are you worshiping? It's, it's just idiocy. It's, it's just foolishness. So to those who might think so or if you have been made to believe so, the, the, the heavens, ask the, ask the Hebrews, ask the Jews, even ask the, your Christian leaders who have to depend on the Jews to um, first map out when the new moon has come in order for them to schedule Easter. If you, if, you, if you recognize what's really behind all of that. So it, it's, it's very important for us to recognize that before we had watches and clocks and all these other things, that it was the heavens, right? As, as Psalm 19 even says, the heavens declare the what? The glory. You understand? It declares his glory, right? So let's recognize that. That's why they have you looking at false stars on TV, and false celebrities, right, taking your eyes off of what time and how late it is, really, right? So the true gospel, the true Wengel, right, was written in the stars. As it says right here, John 1 and 1 to 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was Theos, or was God. The same was in the beginning with Theos, or with Egeziahir, with Ha Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's why everything has a name, right? Can be qualified by name, everything that is, right? In him was life. In him was life. Right, Hewitt, Yahweh, Hewitt, and the life was the light or the illumination, the true illumination of men of humanity. And the light shineth in darkness, right, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Now, what does that have to do with the coronation of the King of Kings? Well, let's look 
as I said, let's look and see right here. Let's go to um, Timothy for a moment. Let's go to Timothy, where we see an interesting word about the, about the king, even about the king of kings. So let's go to, I think it's first, is it first, um, is it first Timothy, right? Is it first Timothy right here, first Timothy chapter, chapter six, right? Chapter six right here, um, chapter six, and let's go from, um, Verse 11, right? Verse 11. Well, actually, let's just deal with the whole chapter for this metasebia right here. This is chapter 6. It says, let or make as many servants, right? We are the servants of the king of kings. Yes, we know we are sons and daughters. But see, if you study the scripture, sons and daughters who truly grow up to him properly are like the son where he, although he was the son, he humbled himself as a servant. So we get to learn his kingdom, right? You know what I mean? We get to, to know his kingdom from, from the ground on up, right? From, from, from the small aspect to the great, from low degrees to high degrees. Make as many servants as are under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor. Now, a lot of this has been so perverted by um, the dualistic Roman Catholic and white supremacist church, it will take us another vid to get into that right there, that the name of Ha Elohim and his doctrine be not blasphemed. All right, so there was an attempt to blaspheme both the name of Yahweh, he who be who he be, and his Timharit, as there has been a campaign to blaspheme the name of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, and his true Timharit. So even the right honorable, his highness, Burhana Selassie, Bar Mali said, give us the teachings of his majesty, car we now want no devil's philosophy. So it's not about feel out softly philosophy for us. Firstly, it is about the teaching of his imperial majesty, and that is the gospel, and, and that's the gospel of his grace and truth, of the grace and truth of the Moshiach Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christos. Verse 2, it says, and they that have, it says, believing or mamening those who have masters, right, or bosses, right, because not everybody has their own business. They might have to work for somebody. Don't you get it? Make them not despise them because they are brethren. So even if you have to work for a brother or a sister because they have their own business, per se, right, don't despise them. You understand because they're your boss or because they pay your salary, because they give you money, and so far you don't. Because that's what will keep you under the curse or keep you or put you in the curse, all right? But rather do them service. Do them agelgalo. Do them service. So even that service is ministry, right? This is not looking at it in the religious, religio spirit, but in the holy spirit. Because they are faithful and beloved partakers. They take part of the benefit. Do you take part of the benefit? These things, it says, teach and exhort. In other words, these things teach and build up. These are the things that the true teachers and the preachers of Arastafari must teach and exhort. But first, they must study. They must learn. They must receive that invitation. And, 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 and come to Yeshua, the, the, the Christ, the Moshiach of the King of Kings, even Christ in his kingly character. If any man teach otherwise, if anyone teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, to really healthy words, to tainama, to, to those which are taina, as we say taina yistalim, to healthy words, to shalom words, to, to holistic words, wholesome words, even the words of Getachin Iesus Christos, even to the words of Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshiach, our Lord, Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine, to the Timharit, to the teaching, which is according to godliness. Now, it's interesting when we look up the word godliness, because we look up the word godliness, it actually means to resemble God. 
in other words, to do, right, to do as God does. But wait, wait, didn't Yeshua HaMoshiach say that God is a spirit? Right? Didn't he say that God is the spirit and, and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth? So, so how can you resemble him? Well, don't you have spirit? You see, people keep looking at the owl that keeps judging by our parents. We're not judging this by our parents. All right? Um, it says that if ones do, do, do not, do not um, consent, that means are in agreement with the teaching of his majesty, and of his Tim Habit. And I would say, and they're not willing to learn because they might have been deceived and they begin to recognize they were on the, the wrong way or astray and now want to return to Yah's way. That's different. But if they don't consent, right, to wholesome words, even the words of Getach and Jesus Christos, and to the doctrine, the Tim Habit, which is according to resembling God. Therefore, in spirit and in truth, he is what? He is proud, knowing nothing. He knows nothing. But he's doting about questions and strife of words. They're doting about questions. Now, some said that we were bringing up questions and doubt. Um, I think he was answering questions and helping to strengthen ones in the true faith, and therefore that dispels all doubt. So we're not proud, and we are, and in fact, we, we know nothing of ourselves, but through humbling ourselves to the teaching of his majesty, wow, our rule, what you learn from day to day, from moment to moment, from minute to minute. But concerning this one that does not consent to the teaching of his majesty, which is according to the teaching of Kedamari Haile Selassie is according to the wholesome words of Getachin Namen Hanatachin Jesus Christos. For my part, I glory in the Bible. So that's the real that's the real test of anyone who calls on the name of Arastafari, right? Because judgment must first happen at the Beta Arastafari. You understand? Before it then consumes as a consuming fire the whole world. That one is proud, knowing nothing, and doting about questions and strife of words. Whereof cometh what? Cometh envy, cometh strife, coming railings, and evil surmising. You understand? That's why even so many speak evil of this ministry instead of checking it out for themselves. You understand? I mean, the same it explains to us a lot of these things, and therefore it helps to strengthen our faith. It says that these are perverse disputings of men, of men and people, of corrupt minds, of, of criminal minds. They have criminal minds, according to the King of Kings, and they are destitute of the truth. They are destitute of illness. Their poverty is their lack of illness. That's why they fight against illness. Supposing that gain, they suppose that if you make money, that's what it says, gain is godliness. They think that the more money you make, the more godly you are. From such withdraw thyself. Notice what it's saying. It's saying some, from those kind of folks, withdraw thyself. It didn't say bring a whole bunch of books and information and, and, and try to force it on them or, 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 or check this video out. No, 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 withdraw yourself. Especially as we see the day is 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 coming and, and every day is revealing. Right? Withdraw thyself. But verse six it says godliness resembling God, resembling the spirit and the truth or the or the spiritual truth, right? With contentment. With contentment is great gain. Now here's where the spirituality of his imperial majesty comes into play. You understand? Because we can read it, but really, to do it, it's not just to hear the word and be a forgetful hearer, but to be a doer, right, a doer of the work, right, a doer of the work. Let, let's see if we can bring um, home this picture right here, all right, um, I want to bring up another, another, another sample pick right here, um, just be patient with I and I. Right? But it is godliness, right? It, it says right here, it says, uh, let's go to the verse. It says, but godliness with contentment. See, because a lot of folks, they might, you know, um, feel his spirit, and, but, but then they begin to, 
you know, um, look outside of Christ's self. Look outside of the fullness of Yeshua HaMoshiach and start to look at what they're doing in the world. They start to look at, 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 at the worldly um, um, standard, at the worldly credit, at the worldly value, what, what, what the world values or what the world gives um, credit or credence to. And credit, actually, if you look into that whole word, word credit, credit is basically a belief system. Credit is a belief system. It's a faith-based system. Because think about it. How can it work unless you really don't know how the real economic system works, do you? But you probably have credit cards, right, and you probably use it. And it probably works out so so far, so good, so forth, and so on. But you really don't have no knowledge of what's really behind it. You might have been learning like a lot of us have been learning um, ever so recently, more about the whole economic system, but it's all based on faith. I mean, this is what's very interesting. It is a faith-based um, system of things. Um, let's see if we can find this this pick right here. Um, give me a moment because we're coming to a particular point, and just to give you the evidence, just so you can see the evidence um, and the evidence, we want to give you the contrast. You know, we already dealt with the contrast there, but okay, we'll probably have to just utilize this one right here, unless we're, unless somehow we're scrolling over it and um, going a little bit fast or scrolling over it. These are some of the still, the still images, and soon we'll we'll try to upload these. So if others want to use these as 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 teaching tools. Um, as object lessons, as it were. Okay, that is that is very interesting right there. So we'll we'll just um, utilize this one right here. I don't know what happened. Maybe it okay, maybe it crashed on us right there. All right. So all right, I want you to see this right here. Very very interesting. Now that's when we said the Ethiopian Yeshua. That's not one that Rastafari painted, but that came out of the Ethiopian um, scrolls right there. We had another one where you've probably seen it in one of the other vids where um, it has it has um, the Ethiopian Iesus and then the King of Kings side by side and the coronation, the coronation um, picture of the King of Kings. Um, let's see if we can do this right here. And... Um, Let's see if we um, go uh, Yeshua, right? Or Yeshua, and then see if see if it opens up, and we'll try to return to it a little bit later on. See if we can search this out right here and return to it. So let's continue and let's read on right here. So so godliness resembling God that means conforming, uh, making our wills obedient to good influence with contentment. You know, like when Christ said, and when you fast, don't twist up your faces and let everybody know, oh, I'm fasting, look how holy I, you know, or while you're, do, while you're living that way, don't, don't be like, oh, I wish I could have done such and such, but, but be content, you know what I'm saying, be, and it was receive it, you know what I'm saying, have a love of it, for we brought nothing into this world, did we? Did we bring anything into this world? We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, right? No thing, right? And having food and raiment make us be con there with content. Having food and raiment. Very soon, you know, we can even see with Hurricane Sandy, the folks don't got no food and stuff like that. They would, they would though they might have not have been content before, but maybe contemptible before if they had some food even right now, that's what they're crying about, right? That's what you see their governor coming on TV talking about the um 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 the red the red cross or whatever, right? Uh let's see. No, it's not opening up just yet. Let's see if we can okay. I know it was a recent it was a recent posting, a recent updating that we did on that. But you know, you know the coronation picture, brothers and sisters, no doubt. But I think it would just be um, appropriate, 
right? Appropriate to uh, bring that one, bring that one full circle. All right. Let's see. These are some other pictures right here. Um, all right. Well, let's go on with um, Timothy because it's still the word. You got to receive the word. Right, but we have evidence. What we're trying to show you is that prophecy revealed that all I, right, all I, because we have technology now, like the camera, where all I, right, where all I will, will see him, where all I will behold him. So when we say behold the King of Kings, right, because a lot of folks who believe that this is speaking of the Son, but it's clear that the Son is Lord of Lords. That's why, you know, he was crucified, right? He was crucified on the trumped-up charge of calling himself king. But yet he did not call himself king. That was a part of the conspiracy, right? This conspiracy against the Bain Ha Elohim. So you have to kind of think about that when you start to hear these things. But if you don't study, if, if, if one don't study for themselves, it, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of lost. They, they, it's easy for them to get lost in, um, in, uh, in, in, in translation and in mistranslation. Um, Let's see if we can bring that. It should be hopefully in this, in this set right here. But we'll return to this too. Um, I think we have maybe a better a better um, opportunity to to find it here. All right. Um, oh, I will. Let's, so let's return it. Okay. Uh, no. Let's see. More opening up. Okay. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. Um, just stay tuned. Stay tuned. When well, when you see what, if you don't really know which one I'm pointing to, what I'm thinking about, when you see it for yourself. You will you you will recognize why we um it's actually one like this right here similar to this one right there um because it, it's 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 showing you that the Ethiopian testimony is true the true Ethiopian the holy Ethiopian testimony not those of the apostate um the unfortunate apostate generation but even that right there. You know, was it was and is shown to us in 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 um in in the prophetic word. Um, all right. Yeah, you could turn in there. All right. Let's uh, oh, patience is a virtue. Okay. Let's see. Let's open this one. Well, it's actually one that would look more or less. Like this. All right, one that would look more like this. It's kind of slow, it's a little nebulous right there, but let's um, close a still from a vid, right? And there we go. You can see a little bit better, right? A little bit better. A collage of two of the Ethiopic images, right? Um, that were that were painted hundreds of years, and probably based on the original images that goes back to the time of Yeshua HaMashiach. That's why it's very interesting. We look at the more look at all of the ancient drawings of Jesus, so of of Christ, and different Christian, African, and Afro-Semitic Christian Oriental churchical cultures. Because in Europe, they tended to make up a lot of stuff, basically, like the Caesar Borgia's imagery, so forth, and um, so on. But anyway, let's move forward. So we're at, um, we're at verse 9. It says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a sneer, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men. Get that with this flood going on, and the most... Recent hurricane, Sandy, building on sand instead of the rock, which drowned men in destruction and perdition for the love of money. It doesn't say the use of money. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Because look at what's going on in the world. 
right? Look at what's going on in the world right now. Even the rich have more money than they could spend in, in, in 10 or countless lifetimes, and yet they want more. There's a sickness, a monophic, right, um, which while some covet after they have erred from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. I think we as Rastafari, we're going through that temptation as well. And it's not to um, say that we are rich already. You know, and he knows our poverty, but we are rich. But we are not putting first things first, right? Um, we're putting like the cart in that sense before the horse, and therefore the horse is drawing us in the reverse direction, and we're not making progress forward but going backward. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Oh, you don't have to fight. It's just about peace and love. No, it says fight the good fight. Let's learn what that means. Of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Nagus and Nagas, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, he has professed a good profession before many witnesses. But many of them have turned into false witnesses and lied against him. But hopefully they would repent because the Father is, is, is tender hearted and merciful and forgiving. But when it's judgment, it's judgment. Verse 13 I give thee charge in the sight of Ha Elohim, who quickeneth, that means maketh to live again all things. And before Jesus Christos, who before Pontius Pilate, Witness a good confession. That means he spoke the truth, word, sound, and power. A good confession. I mean, look at the fact we got YouTubes and the Internet, and we should be making more of a good confession. You understand? But we're not utilizing that because first thing first, one has to repent. One has to be born again and follow the Son of Man, Lij Tafari, in the regeneration, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, or of our Gita, of our, of our Adonai, of our Lord. Now, this is this is very interesting. Let's see if let's see if this pick came up again. Let's see if we go through this. Well, I think we've it, either it's going to be in these or. Somehow it might have gotten lost in the shuffle, right? But we are hopefully recovered or it, it, it was a side-by-side -side view, all right? So these are some of the Yesus images right here that we have on this drive, um, right, to the appearing. Now, this is very interesting concerning, you know, the questions that that have been asked you know, concerning his majesty, uh, are you Christ, and, and how his majesty um, um, did not answer that, but many try to force, you know, force his answer and say that, well, he basically denied, yet he, he did not deny. In fact, people are not paying attention to what he did say. Okay, so it's not in here. Hopefully for the next part of this Torah portion teaching, we'll, we'll find this. We'll find this and we'll bring this and we'll bring this hopefully forward for you. All right. So let's bring this front and center here again. Okay, we're we're past the hour mark right here. Let's um utilize this like right here. Okay, take this one down right here and let us set this up right here. Cause it was a picture similar to this, except from a more forward profile view, all right? I think this kind of helps us to tell the story, all right, from original art and fact as well as based on reality because th this is the reality, you know? It's the reality. I want you to pay attention to this concerning the king of kings, right? It says, until the appearing. Now, if you look at the word appearing, if I'm correct, it's perusia, Right, the the coming of Christ is Perusia. It's not in the sense that many who are lost in tra the mistranslations have kind of locked a lot of 
a lot of um uh, a lot of um 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 people into a a faulty orthodoxy because they haven't studied they haven't paid attention to what the word says to study to show thyself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed rightly um dividing or explaining the word of truth so it says the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his times he shall shew in his times now now understand this Hawadio Paulos is writing to Timotheus or Timothy here. Now it's obvious that Yeshua HaMoshia, that that the Moshiach Yeshua that that he he was uh, crucified, that he died, resurrected, and ascended. It, it's very it's very obvious in that in the space and time that Timothy received this epistle from Hawadio Paulos. So Hawadi Apollos is saying that until keep this commandment until the what appearing right of our Lord Adonenu or our Adonai Yeshua HaMushiach, which in his times, right, that means in his times. So he's not talking about past events. He is talking about future events after this particular period in time. And usually they say that this was – um. They they don't give an exact date to this, but we can assume that this was within um, um, roughly um, um, before 70 A.D. Most folks say that definitely had to be before the, the destruction of the temple and the scattering of the of the black Hebrews or the Beta Israel and and Titus and 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 and, and uh, Vespasian and so forth and so on the Roman Emperor. Um, and Tacitus gives us a good testimony that the Jews of his time that he witnessed and that were witnessed in that land were of the race of the Ethiopians. So we see this further connection um, to the ethnicity, the suppressed identity, right? It says, which in his times he shall shew. That means shew means to show. And there will be some emare or some demonstration. What shall he show? He shall he shall shew who is the blessed, right, who is the blessed and only potentate or potentate, the only, the only divine or sovereign ruler. And this is very interesting when you see before the coronation of Kedemar, we highlight Selassie 82 years ago, and then when you look at it, when you look at it afterward, you understand, after like, after that time, we see European so-called Christian um, empires, and, and and a lot of them were in the slave trade. Had it was selling God's people, was selling we Ethiopian Hebrews, and how all of these would fall, with one exception. You understand to fulfill prophecy, and that was that that was the English crown, and that was the the daughter of Tyre or Queen Elizabeth. All right, who we believe is, is, is hostage by the bail, that the Balaam have taken her hostage ever since the BBC, the BBC's coup against His Majesty and their false reports. That was all a, a very clear and evident sign. So while everyone was looking at Ethiopia, right, on the global level and the Cold War coming, and everyone in America was looking at Nixon, you understand, something else was also going on in, um, in, 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 in merry old England. Right, but it says in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate. It says the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach to, whom no man hath seen nor can see. Now, people say, Well, you see, that shows you that it can't be, right? It can't be. Right, that's what they'll say. But just remember who write, who's writing this, Hawadio Paulos. Paul is writing this from a a a a a, a Hasidic, you know what I'm saying, perspective. Like Yeshua was a Hasid. And not like the guys wearing the hats or whatever, black hats. At least they didn't wear black hats then. They were black then, but they didn't wear the black hats. But he was a Hasid. Because Hasid is translating your Bibles where it says he would not suffer his Holy One to see corruption in the psalm. It's translated as Hasid in the Tehillim. But that, that's another point aside. But he is speaking that 
prior to this time, no one could approach to the Father. That it's Yeshua HaMoshiach that has created that bridge, that access, both for us to the Father as well as for the Father and the visitation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie or God the Father in the sign and the seal of Kedemawi Haile Selassie to us, lost sheep, and to humanity, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, eternal, amen. Now, here's what's very interesting. That if you study um, first century Judaism, now this was a part of their, of their Shabbat and the part of their, their synagogue prayer. That's why it, it ends with amen. You know, it ends with amen. If you study even the wording of it and even look at modern Jewish, um, um, Orthodox Jewish um, um, prayer books, or satyrs and prayer books, you'll see the same sort of um, construction as well. So when we're speaking of this particular day, right, um, and, and let us just go on with this because it has a couple more verses. It says, charge them, that means order them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. So there's a purpose for the rich. 